When one feels pulled to do a particular thing, when one has passion for a certain life path, karma is always involved. In such an instance, when the goal is worthy and makes one happy, one should continue on that same life path. Just because the elephant cannot carry you anymore does not mean you should give up your goal. Continue down the path that makes you feel fulfilled. Those who continue on an unrewarding path for the sake of only monetary gain are displaying a lack of trust in life. And that was said by Quan Yin. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I'll be your host for the next hour. I think it's always important to be aware of your life path, folks, and to be aware of what goals you're pursuing in your life path. If it's something that you're doing from the passion that you have for that particular goal, then of course you should continue. But if it is something that you're doing for monetary gain and you're doing what you're doing because you believe you will find happiness through monetary gain, then perhaps you should consider the path you're on. And looking at society, folks, I would wonder what path humankind in general is treading these days, because it just does not appear to be a path that contains any real integrity, generally speaking, when you look at the human race as a whole. And it would seem that there are those who are most certainly attempting to control the life path of the human species. Of course, we just saw a continuation of this with the recent bombing in Boston at the marathon. This, of course, folks, is another staged event. It's so obviously staged that it beggars belief. And that's another very interesting thing about it, folks, is that there is so much about this event. It's so in your face to say that this was staged that it can really only be seen as another attempt to vilify the truth movement and to vilify the alternate research community and to perhaps paint those who do question the government as right-wing terrorists. This is a continuation from the Sandy Hook event that we recently saw, which whether the children died or whether it was actors or not is not what I'm looking at and not what I'm saying. As I've said before, I can't make that call to say they were actors or not. I wasn't there. All I can do is look at the way the event was being handled and the way it was played. And the Sandy Hook event was played to make it look like an obvious conspiracy, even if it wasn't one. And we're seeing this again, the same scenario with the Boston bombing, the marathon bombing, because it's been played to look like a conspiracy, whether it was or whether it wasn't. Of course, we've got the police, as the blasts were going off, apparently walking around telling people to calm down. It's just a training exercise. Though, of course, we later found that there were people killed and many people injured and that it was, in fact, a real event. There are also photographs of government agents who appeared to be exiting the scene very, very quickly before the area was cordoned off. There are so many things to say that this was a staged event and people were calling it as a false flag within hours of it being staged. And I believe that this has all been done to make it look like an obvious false flag attack, simply so the research community makes as much noise as possible, because that's who the government is attempting to vilify with these attacks. The American government very much wants to disarm its people, and it is very much painting anybody who questions this action as enemies of the people. And that's what this attack is being used for. That's what Sandy Hook was used for. And it's being very, very well played. And of course, folks, these attacks are very much what we would expect from a government in the position that the American government is currently in. And we're very likely to see a continuation of such attacks the more the U.S. government attempts to push its control of the citizenry through, the more it attempts to take the weapons away from the people. We'll see more of these attacks happen. And they will always be made to look like obvious false flag attacks in order to whip up the truth community and the alternative research community to further widen the gap between them and the mainstream. It's very important for the United States government to vilify and attack anybody who it perceives to be 
its enemy. And of course, its enemies are anybody who's speaking the truth. We've also seen a recent escalation in rhetoric against whistleblowers, saying how, you know, whistleblowers should be subject to more severe penalties. So basically what they're saying is that it's becoming a crime to report any criminal activity by government. Anybody who does anything out of place, yes, we want to know who these people are unless these people belong to government. Then, of course, it isn't a crime. It's what we call a scandal. And when they refer to things such as scandals within the banking system or a scandal within politics, what they're actually referring to is a crime, folks. But they call it a scandal because what they're basically saying is they intend to let this person get away with their criminal activity. And that's why they're vilifying whistleblowers, because they want anybody who speaks out against government criminality to be seen as a criminal. Because, of course, nothing the government could do would be criminal, would it now? That's the impression that they're attempting to give. This is why Bradley Manning is being subject to the type of abuse and solitary confinement and all of the inhuman things that have happened to him since his arrest, when really the man should be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for exposing criminality within government the way he did. Because we are the watchdogs of government, folks, and the more they bring in legislation claiming to be able to imprison whistleblowers for speaking out, the more people need to speak out, the more we need to keep up the fight and keep it in their face, and the more the people of society need to rally behind such whistleblowers and make as much noise as possible. Everyone should be attending these court cases. There should be massive crowds outside the court where people such as Bradley Manning are being tried. Even if it's down in Guantanamo Bay, I'd like to see a lot of people actually go there and hang around outside and, and wait to see what the outcome is going to be. Because the government needs to know that we're actually onto them and we, we're not going to listen to their legislation anymore. We're not interested in what little rules they write on pieces of paper. What we are interested in is instituting honest government. You know, if we're going to have government at all, it's important that these people are honest, and that's only going to happen once the people of the nation realise and remember that the only watchdogs that government has are the people themselves. And you cannot be lax in that responsibility, folks. You cannot shirk in your duty to hold your government accountable for its actions. And even when looking at this attack in Boston, folks, this bombing, you've got to ask yourself the question, qui bono, who benefits? Does Pakistan, does Al-Qaeda, does Iran, does anybody benefit from what just happened in Boston? Of course not. The only people who could possibly benefit from a bomb going off at a marathon race would be the government themselves because they can now use this attack to implement more stringent control of society. And that's what the government's doing. That's what the U.S. government's doing at every single opportunity. It's looking for an excuse to roll out martial law. And as Joseph Stalin once said, the most effective tool at control of population is for the government to stage terror attacks and to let the people think that they're being attacked from an outside source. I'm paraphrasing there, of course, folks. I don't know the actual quote, but he said words to that effect, as have many leaders in the past. Everybody knows that the best way to control your citizens is to stage terror attacks, and that's what the U.S. government has been doing with almost wild abandon for many years now. In fact, almost every major event the United States government has ever been involved in has been based on a false flag terror event. And this can all be readily proven, folks. We've got things like the Lusitania, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, the Maine, the USS Liberty. And it goes way, way back, folks. And they just continue to use the same game plan over and over again. And I think more and more people are waking up to the reality of this now. I just hope that it isn't too late. Because we are facing some pretty severe situations here, folks. So fortunate thing is that we still have time to do something about it as long as we pay attention to what's going on around us and i don't know folks but i've been speaking out here on the air now for five years and i really hoped to have seen some changes by now i really hoped to have seen people stand up and start 
really making some noise about this. But unfortunately what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of the research community and a lot of the so-called truth movement really becoming uh, an industry. It's becoming a source of revenue for people. And everybody who's speaking the truth seems to have lots for sale, lots of DVDs for sale and books for sale and they tend to tour around doing talks and making a, a quite a good income from what's going on here. I mean, and folks, I mean, I'll ask for donations occasionally when I'm really broken, when I really need them, but I, I really try not to, and I feel bad every time I do ask for a donation. I have a donate button on the website because really it's all that keeps the site going. But I've really attempted to keep commerce out of the whole thing i've put everything there on the website for free and I, I do what i do for free or at least i only really get enough to cover the expenses of doing it and i do it that way because what motivates me is information and empowerment of the people i really want to see the world wake up to itself i really want to see the human species become all that it can be. I really want us to find the path back to what we should be. And I think that now's the time it has to be done, and that's why I do what I do. But I just wonder how much it's going to take, because I've been speaking on the air here for five years now, and like I said, I really hope to have seen some change by now. I've done it all for free because I want people to know that it's important. I do it because the information is important. It's important for people to have this information. It's important for people to act on it. But I'm just not seeing a lot of action. You know, I'm seeing the world getting worse. I'm seeing a lot more people become aware of what's going on, but I'm not seeing people standing up and questioning authority. I'm not seeing people actually taking the action that I believe needs to be taken. And so I'm beginning to wonder what the next step should be. You know, am I really being effective in doing what I'm doing by coming onto the air and, and doing these shows every week? You know, am I helping wake people up or am I just contributing to the spy novel that everybody seems to be involved in, the adventure story that everybody likes to get their weekly and daily updates on? Because that's kind of what it is to a lot of people. I've said that for many years. I've been mentioning it and looking at it that way, that a lot of people view this as a, a spy novel an adventure story, uh, a soap opera series that they get a weekly update to, and they've sort of become programmed into the fight, but not really programmed into the solution, because the solution is self-empowerment. And that's something that people seem to be most terrified of, is taking responsibility for themselves. But again, a lot of people are too timid to take responsibility for themselves. A lot of people are too down on themselves. I find a lot of people find it very, very difficult to forgive themselves for who they are or who they become or things that they've done in their life. I mean, that could warrant a whole show, folks. In fact, I've got so many emails from people talking about the lack of forgiveness they have for themselves that I think I might even dedicate a show to that next week just to try to talk about some of these problems because it's very... It's very important that people forgive themselves. It's very important that people forgive those that have wronged them. we just got to move forward from this point, folks. We've been led to this point through a completely ridiculous reality, a completely dysfunctional and, and fictional paper-based society that we all live in. So you can't really judge people by what they've done. You can't judge yourself by what you've done. You've got to realize that human consciousness has been brutalized and fractured and squeezed into a box and made to walk between the lines and told that up is down and black is white and left is right. And people just don't really know who they are anymore. People don't know what reality is anymore. And when you really look at the playing field we've been given, then it really becomes impossible to judge anybody for anything, you know, unless they're a psychopath. But that's a that's another story. But I might even dedicate a show to that next week. But it's important that we pay attention, folks. It's important that we see the mistakes we've made and move, move past them and, and pay attention to what's happening now. Actually, there was a time in ceremony when I faced a lot of the things that I'd done wrong earlier in my life. And I remember saying to Mother Ayahuasca, 
the mother goddess, the feminine energy that you all experienced during ceremony, I remember saying to her, gee, I'm really sorry about all those bad things I did. And she said, yes, so am I. Are we done now? Can we move forward now? And I realized that she doesn't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we did. It matters what we do. And what we need to do, folks, realistically, is to rediscover ourselves. That's what we've lost. We've lost that self-knowledge, and we have to rediscover it. And in saying that, folks, when I say we need to rediscover ourselves, we need to rediscover the power that we've got, because, as I've often said, folks, we can change everything. See, that's what's happening, is, is people are waiting for a big switch to be flipped. Even with the OPPT, people saw the filings get made and then they still sat there and waited for a big switch to be flicked so that suddenly they'd wake up and look in the newspaper the next day and it would tell them that they've been saved now, that everything's okay, that they're out of debt, that there are no more problems, government's all been reined in and the whole system has changed now. That's what people were expecting to see. They don't realise that they have the power to implement that change themselves. We all have the power to stand up against this system, to stand up against this government, but we can only do that if we respect ourselves and respect those around us. We can only do that if we can forgive ourselves and forgive those around us. It's all part and parcel to the same thing. See, it always comes back to the inner work, folks. All the changes that we want to make, we have the ability to make them once we discover ourselves. All we have to do is to do things differently now than what we have been doing them. Because there's no reason for us to continue in the direction that we're going. The only thing that keeps us there is fear. It's because people wrote things down in books and we perceive them to be more important than life. We perceive these rules to have more meaning than love or more meaning than creation or more meaning than what is right or what is wrong. It's just all about the written word, isn't it? And that's what we believe. And it's fiction, folks. It's simply something that someone wrote down in a book. You know, we had to do things that way for a little while, and I suppose it served us to a certain degree. But I think that things are different now. We can't allow it to continue the way it's going because it's ceased to serve us in its current form. It's most certainly ceased to service. Now we've got a system that is a corporate system that is making all life expendable in order to support a corporate model, in order to support an economic model. Everything that we do is designed to support this economic model at the expense of all life. And if we allow it to continue to also be at the expense of the planet that we live on, the planet that is the source of all life. Of course, we're not taught that the planet is the source of all life. We're taught that our life comes from an off-world creator who has given us this paradise and that it's all this way simply because we can't be trusted and we're abusive and we were naughty people because we ate off the tree of knowledge and therefore we destroyed the earth. And that there's nothing that we can possibly do about it, that all of the salvation has to come from this off-world redeemer when he deems the time is right. And all of this has been designed to lead people away from the truth of the matter. And that is that we, the people, do have the power. We're the only ones who ever could have the power. And that the entire system that enslaves us is simply fiction. It's just an idea. And so the question becomes, folks, well, really, what are you going to do about things? That's really always been the question. What does the individual out there intend to do about this situation? Because, you know, we can't form groups, we can't petition the government, we can't vote them out and vote new people in. We can't create some type of global movement, Because if we do, it will just get attacked and vilified by all the people that do those sorts of things. We've seen this with all movements. We've seen it with the Zeitgeist Movement. We've seen it with the OPPT. It doesn't matter what people attempt to create. 
there's always people that are going to find something wrong with it. And people aren't really prepared to look at things holistically and find where the gems are in all of these different ideas and movements and apply them to their own lives and make the difference themselves. But really, that's what it's got to come to. And you can see that, folks, because like I said, we can't create any united front or any united movement because it will just get shouted down and stomped on. So what's the other option? Well, the other option is self-empowerment. The other option is for you, the listener, to apply the information you learn on all of these shows to your own life and start looking at things from a different perspective and approaching things from a different angle. You know, because really you've got to be able to see that the only way we are ever going to be able to fix things is through respect, through mutual respect and through non-compliance to a fictional system. And we're not going to get that, as I said earlier. We're not going to get that until we respect ourselves and forgive ourselves and forgive those around us. You've got to stop holding grudges with people, folks, because people have done the wrong thing all their life, many people. And they've done so because they're in a state of shortage. They're in a state where they believe that their life is measured by what they own or you know, they believe that things are social status and that this social status will change them. I mean, it's, a, it's just a bizarre way of thinking, folks. But whatever it is that people have done, they've done so because they're kept disconnected from source. They're kept disconnected from reality because that's what society does. That's what I said earlier. It's, it's not an even playing field. You can't really judge people by what they've done because it's a product of this this completely distorted system that we live in. I mean, of course, I mean, you're going to have situations where there's just bad people who do bad things, pedophiles, rapists, child molesters, things like this, people, you know, murderers who've done bad things to other people. Some of them perhaps murder. I mean, it could have been a crime of passion, perhaps. I mean, there's all sorts of things that could lead to murder. But, you know, things like child molesters and stuff, I mean, it's very, very hard to forgive these people and to say, well, these people are a product of their environment. So I'm generalizing here when I speak. But as a whole, most people that are trying to claw their way to the top of the pile are doing so because they haven't yet realized that there is no pile. They sincerely believe the pile is there. And they believe that life is all about clawing your way to the top. And so you can't really judge these people by what they've done because this type of society that we live in, I mean, the whole structure of this society is designed to promote this type of activity. So again, there's no point trying to change it from within the parameters of the system. It comes back down to the individual. As I said, there's no point trying to form movements because everyone's just going to stomp on them. Nobody's going to get on board. And even with the movements, even if you do get on board, I mean, what do you do? You go there and listen to people give speeches But whatever gets done, nothing really ever gets done because people aren't prepared to act. They're not prepared to make the change themselves. They're not prepared to participate. And that's what they have to do. It's all got to come down to the participation of the individual. That's the biggest hurdle that we're facing, folks, is the fact that people want someone to flick a switch. They see all these movements and they join these movements and they go to the speeches and they listen and they go, well, wasn't that great? Am I going to wake up tomorrow and see in the newspaper or on the television that suddenly the world's changed and that I've been rescued? They don't understand that it's got to come from within. They've got to change their heart space. They've got to change the way they approach reality. They've got to change the way they approach the people around them and the way they interact with the people around them. And ultimately, they've got to change the way they interact with themselves, the way they're interacting with the field. You know, what emotional state are they in? You know, what is their intention behind what they do? There's so much to that, folks, in intention. There is so much to the emotional state that you're in when you perform an action. It really does make such an incredible difference to the world such an incredible difference to the field, such an incredible difference to what you get back from your actions. 
There really, really is uh, a huge amount to it. You know, people just don't understand the power of their emotions. And they're kept in a, a constant state of fear, folks. That's that's why this reality is generated the way it is. That's why this situation is perpetuated this way. That's why it's so difficult to change anything. Because people are scared to make the change within themselves. And really, it's it's the hardest thing to do, you know. I mean, you can point at the villain, the external villain, and, and blame whoever you like for the global situation, but really it's our application to reality or our failure of application to reality that actually creates the situation. And no matter how much you point the finger externally, eventually you've got to, you've got to turn that stare inwards and you've got to look at yourself. And that's the hardest part to face, finding that truth about yourself and finding that it, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you did, it matters what you do, and finding that strength to do it. Because it's there. But the thing is that realising that it's there, well, with that realisation comes an enormous amount of responsibility because suddenly when you find that spark, suddenly you are obligated to act. You're obligated to do the right thing. You're obligated to be all that you can be. You're obligated to speak out in the face of injustice and to improve reality by your presence in it, just by finding this spark within yourself and seeing where it really comes from. It's a it's a big responsibility, folks, but it comes easy when you find it. It just becomes natural because it's it's just there. And like I said, once you find it, you're obligated to act on that information. But I think it's break time here, folks, so I'll leave it there for now. I hope that wasn't too esoteric for you. But that's really the way it goes. But yes, thank you for joining me on the show today. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. And I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thanks for listening. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, so it's very important that people do find their life path. And it's very important that we start to address this situation, folks. I mean, we've got to be spreading information. I really believe that is one of the best things we can do. But of course, it has to be done in the right way we can't go out just screaming fear at people we've got to be aware of what we're doing but again in saying that folks i mean it's one thing to tell people not to become a fear monger but it's also important that people realize that there is a certain sense of urgency in getting this information out to people as quickly as possible because we are facing some pretty serious situations here And the last thing we want to do is to lapse into complacency. Unfortunately, I've seen far too much of that already. I see far too many people waiting to be saved and believing that there is a cosmic shift coming, but they just don't have to participate in it. And I don't think that's the right attitude to have. I I really believe that we do have to participate in what's going on on the planet today. I think that we are the saviours that we've been waiting for. And I believe that this generation in particular are the ones that have to make the difference, folks. I think our kids are growing up to be far too programmed, generally speaking. I think that the world is changing at a very, very rapid rate now, and it's important that people pay attention. And you see, that's another thing, folks, is that people, again, they, they, they view all this as a spy novel some exciting story that they're kind of reading but not really participating in. But what they've got to understand is that what it is is history and they are participating in it. We are all participating in history all the time. And it's interesting to see how many red herrings have been thrown out there for people as well, just how many distractions there have been. You know, people waiting for mass arrests, people waiting for the next movement to come along which is going to flick the switch for them without them having to participate. People waiting for a global financial crash. People waiting for war with Iran. People waiting for the next terrorist event. Whatever it's going to be, the big new thing that is going to create this global shift, it's going to create this whole landslide under the weight of which the world is going to change. But... No one's really prepared to act. 
Everyone's distracted. They're waiting for something external to themselves to happen. The ETs are going to come. The sun's going to have major sunspot activity and all the electrical appliances are going to be wiped out. Planet X is coming, Nibiru, all of this stuff that people are waiting for. All red herrings. Because while they're waiting for all of these big shifts to come from whatever external entity they have latched onto, be it any of the things I mentioned or the Galactic Federation or the return of Maitreya or whatever it is that people are waiting for. While they're looking at all of these external events and waiting for them to happen, all around them, meanwhile, the system is slowly plodding forward and it's slowly putting in all of the fence pegs, it's erecting the fences, it's putting the locks on the doors and it's putting bars on the windows And the whole thing is still plodding forward, moving along. And people aren't paying attention to it because they're still waiting for salvation to come from a source that's external to themselves. When they don't realize that this whole prison system that's being put in place is being put in place by public trustees that we elect to office to do the opposite of what they're doing. And if we simply paid attention for one day, we could change things. If the whole country paid attention for one day we could change everything by the end of the day we really could i mean look at our governments folks do you know how many millionaires there are in congress now do you know how many millionaires there are these politicians they're all so wealthy folks none of the people that we've got in office anywhere around the planet are the representatives of the people they're the representatives of the top one percent and they don't care about the people and they get away with what they're doing because the people are just distracted they're not paying attention they're too caught up in the bills without ever asking why they have so many bills why does everything cost so much now what what's this all about how did everything suddenly become this expensive what is it because we're running out of resources well then perhaps we shouldn't make everything to be breakable oh but we have to because we have to support a capitalist system which depends on an economic model for its survival. So we're basing our whole lives and our whole world and our whole reality and everything we do on this economic model. We're trashing the planet and we're discarding the human race because nobody's paying attention. Everyone's waiting for salvation to come from something external to themselves. And that's the situation that I see, the situation that the world is in, the situation generally of of human consciousness at this time in history. You know, people haven't really caught on to the fact that we are living history. We're part of it right now. And the history that will be remembered about this time depends on the actions of the people. It depends on what we do. Because we are right now at the time when we have the opportunity to free ourselves while at the same time we have the opportunity to turn our back on it all and allow the human race to be locked down into a a nightmare prison planet, which is what we're heading for. We're literally on the knife edge right now, and it's up to us. The decision is up to us. The future that we create, it's up to us. It depends on what we do with the time that's given to us. And right now, the time that we've been given to us right now, the opportunities that we are being afforded to us right now, through the internet, through the massive groundswell of people that are awake, is a phenomenal opportunity. Because we've had revolutions in the past, but we've never really been able to free ourselves. We've always ended up back in the situation that we're in now. But now, for the first time in history, we actually have the information that we need to bring about some positive change, and we're almost grown up enough to be able to deal with it. You know, we're almost now aware enough to actually be able to deal with freedom. We're almost responsible. We are almost adult. And this is the first time in history that we've really been spiritually advanced enough to be able to deal with freedom and to be able to understand what it would really be like and to be able to take responsibility for our actions. The question is, are we going to embrace this opportunity? Or are we going to just continue to allow ourselves to get locked further and further down? I mean, now, like I said earlier, folks, they're outlawing whistleblowers. 
So how are we going to have anybody keep an eye on government? If the people within government who are perceiving criminal activity happening all around them aren't allowed to speak out about it because the government says so, then what sort of society are we allowing to be created around us? What sort of people are we allowing to rule our society? What sort of criminals are going to want to get in office? Because it's only going to be criminals that are in there. I mean, you're in a situation where you can virtually do anything you want. Nobody can say anything about it. And if they do, we'll we'll arrest them because they've committed the crime by reporting your criminal activity simply because you belong to government. So that's not what we want, folks. It's not suitable. It's not acceptable. I mean, why would we even consider allowing politicians to enact legislation like this? And to even say these things. What, because they say they can? Because they write it in books? I mean, that's how ridiculous it's got, folks. You know, these people just write stuff down in books and it becomes law. I can now commit any crime that I like because it says on this piece of paper that you can't report me for anything that I do. If you do report my criminal activity, then you're a criminal. I mean, how can we allow this sort of stuff to happen? But we do... And the fact is what we do, folks, because we know this is what they're doing, because they tell us this is what they're doing. They you Just look at the media. Look at the way whistleblowers are being vilified. Look at what happened to Bradley Manning, because he reported criminal activity in government. He reported the brutal murder of civilians, of news reporters, Reuters news reporters. And because he reported that, he's been subject to the most brutal treatment at the hands of government, just to make an example out of him. And people say, well, oh, well, stuff like that happens in war. Okay, folks, it does happen in war, but this is an illegal war. A war in Iraq is illegal. It's not a war to free anybody. It was never about freeing people. It was supposed to be about weapons of mass destruction, but it wasn't about them either because there wasn't any, and so they changed it to become a war about freeing people. But we haven't freed anybody in Iraq. All we've done is turn the place into a wasteland. And it's the same with all wars. But the point is, folks, that what we've got is a situation here on this planet which is completely out of control, that is allowed to continue because people believe this puppet mechanism that we call government is actually real, and they believe this economic system that we base our lives on is actually real, and they believe that they have to go along with all these ridiculous rules and all these ridiculous parameters which prevent them from ever being who and what they are and prevent them from ever experiencing reality and experiencing life and doing what we could be doing on this planet. You know, the human experiment, the human experience is an incredible thing and has such incredible possibilities of what we could do. You know, there's so much we could do, folks. We have an incredible amount of potential. You know, human creativity is is unsurpassed, and we literally have the ability to create anything that we believe is possible, which is why we're trained to always think within certain parameters. We're trained to believe that there's only certain things that are possible. But as we've discussed so many times on this show, the only thing that's really impossible is that which you perceive to be impossible, because anything is possible. We have minds that can literally create and shape matter just by our perception, by viewing it, by looking at it. By perceiving an experiment, we can change the outcome of the experiment simply with our consciousness. You know, I've done so many shows where I've talked about the measurement problem, I've talked about the nature of matter, I've talked about so much research from so many different fields and so many different people that have dedicated their lives to bringing us this information. And yet we're constrained still by what we believe is possible. And it's never been more acutely demonstrated in this system that enslaves us because this system is, is what we believe is possible. But there's so much more possible than this system. This system is, is simply a matrix. It's a slavery system. It's a system of people farming. And it's not what humankind should be. It's designed almost scientifically designed in order to completely lock down our consciousness and prevent us from ever acting in a creative manner. Now, sure, we're allowed to paint, we're allowed to draw pictures, we're allowed to be artistic to a certain degree, 
but we're never allowed to unlock the full potential of our consciousness. You know, we've been shifted from our past, shifted away from the earth, shifted away from our connection to universal intelligence. And we've been given this little boxed view of reality and we've been told to make it work. And if we don't make it work, then we're perceived to be suffering some type of disorder and we're taken to a psychoanalysis who usually fills us full of drugs to make us into something that we're not. If we think outside the box, we're seen as a misfit or a rebel or someone to be feared, someone to be scared of, and we're told that we have to operate always within certain parameters. But that's not what humankind is for. That's not what we were meant to be. It's not where we should be going. And that's what this system is. That's what transhumanism is. That's what all the things that they're trying to bring to us are, folks. I mean, people would think that transhumanism, enhancements, this is great stuff. But really, like I've said, it's a digital clunky version of what you can already do. You know, if we were allowed to unlock our full potential, if we were allowed to be all that we could be, if we were allowed to be fully creative in every aspect of our, ourselves, then this earth would be a very, very different place to what it currently is. I mean, we have the potential to be living in paradise, folks, and we're not doing it because we believe that life is about economics, where nothing could be further from the truth. You see, really, folks, it's an oligarchical system. That's what we've got. And it's getting more and more divided. Like we're seeing more and more of simply a two-class society. And a lot of people have been talking for the last few years about the elimination of the middle class. And that's what we're seeing because even the middle class are struggling now. The upper middle class are starting to even feel the pinch. People are starting to realize that All the stuff that they thought they owned, all the land, all the stuff that they really thought was theirs, they could lose it any time at the whim of government. And yet all government is, is people the same as us. It's just that they're a different class of people. They are the controllers, those who rule every aspect of those who do not belong to government. And they're not supposed to be that. They're supposed to be trustees that are operating our infrastructure for us, helping us create societies that benefit humankind. But they are more and more becoming our rulers. That's what they're doing. And they do it in such an offhand way and in such a deceptive way. You know, they give us these elections, they hang around with celebrities, they always put themselves on camera, they show themselves as being loved. It's all very, very staged, all very, very propagandized where you have people standing around applauding the president. But, of course, all the people that are applauding him are the other politicians. It's always a very, very closed circle, folks. But, again, they present it to the world as this big spectacle, so we get big, huge political rallies and all of this sort of stuff. But it's all theatre, folks. Really, these are just a group of individuals who belong to an oligarchy, essentially puppeteered by rich banking cartels that are using this system to extract all the wealth from the world via the mechanism of people farming and human trafficking. This is why every single aspect of everybody's life has had some sort of a commercial value placed over it. I mean, there's a commercial aspect to virtually every activity that anybody performs these days. Everything costs money. Everything has a value, and it's this commercial economic system that is used to farm the wealth and the energy of the people. And it's energetic as well. It isn't just the material resources that are being farmed. It's also the energy of the people. And, you know, like you can escape from it for a little while. You can go to your meditation retreats. You can do this and you can do that, but it's still always there it's still there controlling the planet and controlling every aspect of your life you've got to go and buy food you've got to pay rent you've got to purchase a house to live in and even once you've purchased this house you've got to keep making payments you've got to be making rate payments and all sorts of payments and mortgages and all sorts of stuff that you've got to do you can't just buy something and go there and live there 
there's all of these costs involved in owning it. So every single aspect of your life has been turned into commercial activity. And this has all been done by this second group of people. It's like there's two different species on this planet, folks. One of them is the people and the other is the politicians and banksters. And they are like a separate species. And they're a predator species that preys on the rest of humanity. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And really, when you look at it that way, folks, you can see that the respect that the normal people in society seem to have for these elites and the way we clamour to be near them, it is almost like a victim and predator relationship. It's almost like we've got a case of global Stockholm Syndrome. I mean, it really does look that way, folks. I mean, why would people revere these oligarchs so much? Why do we place so much emphasis on celebrity status? And, oh, dear, it's the president, or, oh, dear, it's the local mayor or the local politician. These people are slave masters. That's all they are. They're slave masters, CEOs of corporate entities that extract the wealth of each nation And they do it on the whim of international banksters who control them and who pull the strings from on high. It's a system that is destroying the planet and it happens and it continues because we go along with it. I know I've said this so many times, folks. That's what I I was saying earlier. I don't know how long I'll even keep doing the shows because I've been giving you this message now for five years and and I, I don't see a lot of things changing. But really, it's only going to get worse until people realize that we are the ones who have to make the change. You know, we have to make the change by standing up against these people, but we're not going to do that until we can learn to stand together and respect each other. That's why we've got to put aside our differences. Put aside what you perceive your neighbors to be. Realize that they're just in the same boat as you. Put aside whatever differences you have with people. Put aside anything that's happened up to this point. Let's not worry about what's got us to this point. Let's not worry about what the human race has done and the mistakes we've made. Let's just be aware of them so that we can change them. And remember, folks, it doesn't matter what we did. It matters what we do. And I think that it's important for us to start doing right now. It's important for us to start really stepping into our role as custodians of this planet stepping into our role as responsible adults. We've never really been grown up before, folks, because we never really had the opportunity to be grown up. Not in my living memory anyway. It's always been a rather adolescent society that I've lived in. It's been a society that's been fixated with toys and trinkets and social status and all of the stuff that the television has fed them and told them is true. But I think there's so much more to reality than that. And I think now's the time we have to make the change. But it's just up to the individual to do it. That's the thing. No one's going to change it for us. It has to be us. And that's why we have to start respecting each other because we've got to have these strong communities, folks. A power of community can change anything. You know, if we've got strong communities full of people that know that they're all in the same boat and thereby respect each other, because they know that everybody's been driven to this state of hardship and competition and this completely disjointed reality that they've had to put up with for so long. And human consciousness has been so brutalized that the only thing we really have is ourselves. People who know this, people who know the power that they've got, can see it in others and are willing to respect them. That's how we change things, folks, because this whole community has been designed this way in order to keep us divided. That's why they've made it so competitive. That's why they've put the peer group pressure in there. That's why they've educated people into this left-brain thinking. That's why they always bring out a new model of everything every month, to keep people in a state of permanent competition with each other, always judged by your looks or what you own or what your social status is. And they keep shifting the goalposts so you never know what your social status is. They keep changing the fashions. They keep changing everything so that you don't really know what you're supposed to be in order to fit in. And you forget that really what you're here to be is yourself. And 
you've forgotten that. You know, so many people have forgotten that. They've missed that. They don't ever find themselves because they're so busy trying to be what society tells them they need to be. And it's this whole divide and conquer mentality, folks. That's what's been done. We've been brutalized. And if we could just put all that away and stand as one species that respects itself and respects each other and forgives itself of its mistakes and forgives each other of their mistakes, we could change the world in three seconds. I've often said the best thing everybody could do would be surrender. Everybody surrender. Not just the people, but the elite, the army, every soldier, every person, every man, every woman. Put down your guard and surrender to each other. Now, if we had the power to do that, if we had the belief in each other to all surrender at the same time, the whole world would change. It would just be an instantaneous thing. You know, the power of human consciousness is incredible, folks, and we could really, really change the whole direction this planet is going in. Now, if we could just see the beauty of it and see the beauty of ourselves, the beauty of each other, everything would change. It could be very, very simple. No battles need to be fought. No wars need to be won. No bullets need to be fired. No rebellion needs to take place. All we need is a shift in perspective. You know, if we could shift our perspective just that little bit, I think we'd, we'd find a, a miraculous world right there waiting for us. It's just you know, whether we want to do it or not, whether we have the faith in ourselves, whether we have the faith in other people, whether we can believe in ourselves enough to believe in other people. Don't always judge people around you harshly, folks, even if they've done bad things. Leopards can change their spots. And always remember that people act in desperate ways because people have grown up in a desperate world, a world that is desperately different to the world that it should be and the type of world that people should be growing up in. Because the world not only could be a very different place, it actually is a very different place to what people perceive it to be, folks. We are so locked down and we are so locked out of our communication with reality, we're so locked into left brain that there's so much we are missing out on. And if we were to suddenly start just perceiving it, I think that most people would be absolutely amazed. And it is there, folks. If you really look deep within, you'll find that that connection to all actually exists right there in the center of your heart. You can connect to this earth. You can connect to the people around you. You can connect to all and to universal consciousness. It's right there. All you have to do is be aware of it. And I think that that's what's happening, folks. I think right now we are in the time in history when human consciousness actually wakes up. All we have to do is participate. And that is it for me today, folks. Thank you very much for joining me on the show. It's been a pleasure to speak to you again. Thank you to anybody who has ever emailed me. I'm sorry I don't get a chance to answer all the emails. Thank you to anyone who's ever made a contribution to the website. And thank you for giving me the time and energy that you give me each week with these shows. It's always a pleasure to come and talk to you. I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please take care until then. In La Cache.